Well, my name is Achim Rögener. Nice for being here. Thank you very much for the invitation. And as you can see, our presentation is called Design Dreaming. It's not only because our hosts uh, were founded the Dream Academy, but well, it's part of it, to be, t to be honest, but also because we are designers. Another reason is that both design and dreaming have a lot in common. You go, before you go dreaming, you go recap a day, you know? You try to figure out what happened and, and make an idea of it. And then you lay down and you work these things through and mostly you come out with a new idea if it's okay for you. And the same happens in design and that's what I'd like to take you through a short stroll of history. And we want to look at energy, how it affects us and in general for us as designers the whole approach is interesting. What happened the past 100, 200 years? And in pre-industrialization when you went and you had twins and you wanted to give them two dolls that were matching in order to avoid war back home because one would say, oh that one's much nicer than the other one you had a problem because it was all handcrafted and everything was not matching, it was well unique. Today we would like to have that for things again, it's something we find exceptional, which it probably is, but back then people wanted something different and that's why industrialization catered for, for one of the needs people had back then and that was having mass-produced items. In the very beginning of industrialization, which is quite interesting, people weren't faking handcrafts. So the first industrialized products were looking more or less like the things before, but they were all similar, and people liked it. It's an approach they thought was good. Afterwards, people went rethinking the whole thing, and you got Bauhaus and other movements. However, this, this is a very long period well, a lot of things happened, and mostly one, one of the weirdest things that happened in the period is that people started believing and thinking that they have all the power on the earth, that they can do anything uh, they, they can think of. I believe today uh, we're experiencing a turn in a different, different direction. Well, anyway, uh, besides that one, we also tried, as I mentioned before, to show how communication worked, because that influences how products are developed and how products are sold in the end. Here in this period, you get first brands, because they're substituting um, the personality that, that a product has. People go and expect something from products. And it used to be before in the pre-industrialized area that um, the top number is remaining, right? That one, thank you. <laughs> um, you, you, would, you would know like the people who produced the things in the beginning and if something was wrong you could go and complain about it. In the industrialized area, brands substitute for that feeling. Now in the growth area, as Mr. Hawks mentioned before, the whole thing got, got a new beat. You got nuclear energy that promised to be the savior of the universe, more or less. You got electricity from, from nuclear, and electricity is like the main power resource that we are using in the world, which, which started in the industrialization. You got more channels like uh, TV besides radio and print. After that, the next like um, area is the one of overflowing markets, full markets. You start having recessions and you start having, um, well, behavior oriented strategies because also communication is splitting up, is diversifying. And in order to, to target people, you would go and try to reach these groups. Now today we have a picture that kind of resembles the very first one. It's a one-to-one -one communication model which is possible. And yet again we also have this system of industri industrialization, which is a one-to-many of uh, mass-produced items. It uh, guides the sky mentali uh, mentality around it. That's, that's how it developed to the top right now. It's a thing of uh, long value chains. 
all over the world. It may happen that an item is partly produced in China, assembled in America, sold in Europe. It has to be cheap in the end, in the production and the market. It's supposed to give high revenues. And it's based around a shareholder value system. It's a system that brought us very, very far, but for us as designers, and it's designed dreaming, it's a bad base to start dreaming, you know? So if, if we're trying to fall asleep, that one is not one that's gonna like get you into a smooth dream. The new model offers more opportunities for a nice dream that we wanna have as a designer. It's customization, it's approaching people in the market. It's having them tell about products they like to other people. It's they do the marketing for you, but in an honest way. It's longer life cycles most likely because people exchange ideas about it. And well, all the good stuff basically you know about references in the internet because that one is the one that triggered it off. And for us as designers, customer value is a very nice goal. It's a good thing to dream about and that's where we can start, like really dreaming and slumbering off. Let's take that one in the middle as the goal that we want to design to as designers. We want to create customer values and user experiences that are res have a responsible, sustainable background. And, you know, fade out th the other ones. And that's what you get around the goal for the user. It's value-adding user experiences. So environmental friendly, next generation proof, controlled, sustainable. But um, it should be more than that. What you really want is stuff that is fun, pleasing, and you know, enjoyable. You want to have an extra added value to these things. It ought to be surprising and innovative. So if you start, if you continue dreaming as a designer, you take this approach from a shareholder value, a one-to-n relation, where you couldn't give feedback to a, uh, to a product to a next level where you have a feedback mechanism and you start dreaming like, that's a good thing to start off as a designer. I am working as an advocate for the user. I collect ideas, things that you want to have in your product and be an advocate like in the industry for what's supposed to be on the market tomorrow. Now based on that one, we can really start dreaming. Close our eyes, look at the thing like the slide we had before and call it, give it another name. Because mass production with a shareholder value has like a bad taste, though mass production is not bad. It's a good system, it's like bacteria. They clone, it's the same thing. And bang, it goes into a space and lives. It has a good being, a, set, a, cent or a reason to be. The other hand, uh, on the other hand, you have like highly developed complex designs. We just saw a house that's unique, that is built around persons, personalities that reflect themselves in this house. Now being there, you could go on and say, okay, let's kick that one further. We could think about swarm designs, so like fish maybe, and you could think about forests. Now we're driving it a bit more concrete in order to get some to some designs. We call it a termit mountain, a sea cow, a forest. We stay with that one, and a bumblebee. A terrace mount is is an extension for an hospital in Ukraine that, that we uh, offer to them. It has like a whole solar panel front. A so it, it's uh, that the energy from, from this hospital is produced in itself by themselves. You have like a different design for the surroundings. Another idea for a sea cow. That thing uh, it has been televised or have been shown in, in, in the program on German TV. They approached us in order to come up with ideas for um, the oil spills and stuff. We thought, why not have 
like different schema like ideas that float on the sea you know take off the things that swim on top of of the surface and once they fall the home back and and say well pick me up i collected enough stuff and then they can go on or you're just picking up and staple them uh, in each other and bring them to the next place where they can be used Example for forest is very nice when you come here, you got all these windmills. It's a, it's a great surrounding. And we also went designing for these things some ideas in order to, to show people that green design can be more than a technical approach, but that you try to fit it into a surrounding and give it a different meaning, like this added on meaning of, of designing things so that it gets something you know, rooted into the uh, present thinking you have on top you have these windmills and they're combined on the lower part with uh, mechanisms that take the energy out of uh, wave out of waves another idea for the forest because we like forests we need more forests it's like a, a uh, turning the windmill and having a different shape so it's completely surprising from how it looks. You wouldn't expect that one to produce energy in, in the first instance. We like the idea of solar tech. So we went developing an idea of that could be placed into the grid. Like Mr. Hawk mentioned before, this communication grid that we developed now matches the electricity grid. You can now put these things into the desert and harvest energy for Europe. These things are made so that you can transport them quite easily because the desert is like a difficult environment for these mechanisms. You place them, they go blow themselves up so the, the, the mirror is part of a cushion and you have these two tubes that collect the energy well, last one, which is a fun one, is the bumblebee, which is like the bacteria we mentioned before. But I like bumblebee better, you know. They hammer around in the summer and they look like peaceful. They're ha having fun. And we came up with this idea of a uh, parkour wing, something you wear. You're honest, like the energy of falling. and You can make jumps. So it's for this new sport. So when you take a jump, just unfolds, and there you go. Oops. So again, for us designers, it's about creating value-adding user experiences. And that is when, when you really start doing a good design and not a style. And the grid of the internet can really help us support this. And in the end, what we need is customers that buy consciously and by that trigger off actions that change products. Well, next time if you go and buy a product, we have about 100 people in this room. Uh, everybody has around about 20 products on them. I make 2,000 products in this room. Next time you go buy a product, do me a favor, do us a favor and think about how you buy it. Thank you.